Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Now, we've done the Mr Bean video and uh, I'm now just going to do it, I call this like a voiceover on, uh, on the videos. What I do is pretty simple really, I just stick the camera and point it at Eddie Earn and I just stop the button and then I comment on things that it comes out with that is utter nonsense which he's made a, a living out of it now hasn't he I mean uh, from what from what I've heard you know matchroom now is the the massive aren't they it's you know Eddie's looking at buying a private jet you know that's how much how much money that they're turning over at the moment they're not bothered are they now it's just about money they keep coming out with this we're trying to get a new generation to follow boxing let me tell you this that is just hogwash it's utter hogwash because if this new generation is going to come off this KSI Logan Paul thing well why don't we get this input in influx of fans after the first fight so and I'm going to give Dave Allen respect now for saying he didn't want to fight in Saudi the Saudi and the KSI thing all it's doing is overshadowing the Dillian White B sample because where is the B sample? That's what I want to know. But well, listen to this for utter knackers. Listen to this. And, and tell me if I'm a hater. And I'll tell you something now. Those people who have no involvement with boxing that want to turn up here today. I've done a thousand press conferences in my life. There's people here today who've never turned up to one. And if you think you have the right to tell a fighter who puts his life on the line when he enters the ring that he cannot take a huge financial opportunity, don't bother coming to the press conference because you have no right to do that. If the fighters are safe, if the logistics are in place and these fighters get a chance to earn the money they deserve, let them do it, mate. Have a go at me all you want, but don't have a go at fighters who when they enter a sport like this, anything can happen. When they get a chance to make this kind of money, let them do it. Right, what you've just heard there, right, is basically Eddie Earn backed against the ropes. He's just turned it completely and just said, look, why, who are you to question these guys earning money? Yes, I can understand that. Yes. I ain't got a problem with fighters earning money. I had threatening phone calls not so long ago because I was taking money out of Dillian White's pocket because I did a video. If you go and look at the video that sent Dillian White's team crazy, I did a video saying that Dillian White against Parker shouldn't be pay per view for the simple reason none of them had a world title. None of them. There was no belt on the line, no world title belt. Why is that 20 quid for that? How can that be 20 quid? No world title and the pair of them are not even born in England. Now I know where you're born shouldn't matter really should it but we're talking about domestic fights. It's not a domestic fight is it? Dillian White against Parker is not a domestic fight. It's a Commonwealth title fight basically then wasn't it? That's the only belt you could have give it a Commonwealth title. Yeah they're both a bit better than Commonwealth level but are they? What belt has Dillian White won above British level? Dillian White, did he beat Ian Lewinson for British title? What has he done since then? Well, what? What has he done? What has Luke Campbell done since he won a Commonwealth? Luke Campbell's got a Commonwealth title at home. Liam Cameron's got a Commonwealth title. He doesn't get a mention, does he? Because he's not out there. He's no profile. Tommy Frank's got a Commonwealth title. He's not got a profile, has he? Joseph Parker was a former champion, but so what? He fought Huey Fury for world title. That went on YouTube. So how could this end up on pay-per-view? So I got threatening phone calls off that. That's what you get if you have an opinion now. If you look at that video on my channel, go to the most watched videos, and I think it's about the fifth most, is it? I've got a blue sweater, uh, a blue sweatshirt on. Not, not, a blue, like a tracky top thing. It's blue, I forgot what it's called now, but... 
it was a lot of money and I won't be buying out like that again but let me tell you this it's about 5,000 views and I were raging I were going Parker White pay per view die 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 obviously I don't want anybody to die I'm not that cruel but I was just raging and I'm raging that much over this KSI Logan Paul thing and this Saudi Arabia thing I'm raging that much over this that there isn't no rage in me I'm just sitting here and I'm looking and I can't rage anymore because the stuffing is just coming out of me I'm hardcore through and through I always will be and what I mean by hardcore is I want the sport to be respected yeah Eddie Hearn's saying that he's respecting the sport yeah I'm respecting the sport I've, t I've had them turn pro and they're going to take put 10 ounce gloves on not 16 ounce and they're going to take the headgear off and they're going to train like proper boxers yeah but they're also going to get paid millions and millions of pounds is this going to set a dangerous precedence for sport now is this to, does this mean that youtubers can now just get a profile on youtube and just gate crash boxing what about all these boxers like callum smith and kel brook and sam eggington what do they think about sam eggington now i know that eddie Hearn and his dad have got a little bet going that eggington and dave allen are gonna are, are gonna are gonna fight for world titles now eddie nearly pulled it off didn't he eggington we, we sorry with Dave Allen and Barry Hearn nearly pulled it off with Sam Eggington now Sam Eggington and Dave Allen right they've got no boxing skill have they but what they have got is heart and tenacity and they are basically just tough fucking kids right Dave Allen can whack a bit right and he could take a punch but Dave Allen's 27 Sam Eggington's what what is he 25 if that these kids right are young lads and they've had the stuffing took out of them you'll go and speak to Sam Eggington and go speak to Dave Allen right and you'll go have a look at the the, the the wars that they've been in right them two have been in pure wars but Dave's Dave would have in wars with Bracamante life and death but yeah it's okay to put him in with David Price and he's had a, a life and death with Bracamante but it's okay to put him in with Povetkin Jesus you see where I'm coming from? Life and death fights. Boxing's a business. That means we don't like the question you're answering us, so we'll just say it's a business. It's a bit like, you know, when you get a text message, right, off an ex-bird, and she's trying to have a bit of banter with you, but you've already been with her and you don't want to see her again because you've got a new bird. She'll she'll say something to you. How are you doing? Are you all right? Are you still going out with your mates at night? And that? Are you still a joker? You'll just reply, LOL, won't you? Do you know what LOL means? It means jog on, doesn't it? LOL. Well, when Eddie Hearn says, it's a business, isn't it? Or when Adam Smith says, it's a business. Or, you know, when, when certain people get questioned about things they've done or said, they just turn around and say, well, it's a business, isn't it? It means we're just basically trying to get as much money as it out, out, out we're trying to get as much money as we can out of the situation and it, it's a business means jog on porky it's a business that's it that's when you're backed into a corner now Eddie Hearn they've wheeled him out and you know what you've got to give him his respect he has fronted it out he has fronted all this out as best he can and he's thought of the perfect solution which he can always do in boxing he's just said why are you trying to take money out? Who gives you the goddamn right? And he's also sending a message out to all YouTubers now because I've heard a little story that only the select few are going to get press passes for Saudi. So, you see where I'm coming from? Nobody will dare ask any uh, Eddie Hearn any questions. Nobody. Will Coogan Cassius ask him? Will he, heck? He'll ask him, Eddie will tell him, and that'll be end of it. The reason I know that is because I look at all these people's engagement levels and I can tell you who's good and who ain't good, right? You're asking a question, they're giving you a reply. The, the YouTube software picks up on that. That's it. You're not engaging with the fans. You are not engaging. I am engaging with you people. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to turn around and say, you oh, should follow me for that. Because... 
that's not the be and end all. The be and end all is hardcore boxing fans. They watch my channel. That's who counts. The hardcore you guys who watch. You people make boxing tick. You should all give yourselves a pat on the back. You make it tick. Boxing wouldn't survive without the hardcore boxing fans. I am telling you now. Now we all remember what happened to Christopher Livingston Eubanks. Don't we? Old man Eubank or English or whatever he wants to call himself. Plant pot. Tosser. Whatever he is. When he lost his second fight to Steve Collins. Right. His contract was done with Barry Hearn. Barry Hearn couldn't pay him the money he'd been earning. Because he didn't have a belt. So they parted company, didn't they? Right. Barry Hearn was the best man at Chris Eubank's wedding. Why is that? Because when he got married, Barry Hearn was telling him, get married, get married, I'll be your best man. He needed that closeness around Chris Eubank Sr. When he beat Nigel Ben the first time, he needed him to do the world tour. Where they go South Africa, Wales and Scotland. Fucking world tour, do me a favour. Do me a favour. Now, he needed Chris Eubank Sr. then. So what did he go and do? Well, he can't. You can't get married to him, can he? Because he's a man. So what did he do? He got him to get married and he was best man at his wedding. So that Chris Eubank Sr. then, the, his guard were down then. Well, and with Barry Earn, best man at his wedding. Yeah, but he also ain't boxing in us. It's not like Steve Davis being best man at his wedding. Barry Earn's best man at everything, isn't he? It's not like being best man at Steve Davis' wedding, is it? Because you've been with Steve Davis since you were, you know, uh, 20 year old. It's totally different. Totally different. Jesus Christ, have you heard that outside there? Disgusting. Hey, unbelievable. But getting, getting back to uh, Christopher Eubank Sr. Right, let me tell you this. How did their relationship end? It went sour, didn't it? It went very sour. Now, Chris Eubank, Chris Eubank Sr., let me tell you, he, after Steve Collins did him twice, and Steve Collins were with Frank, he got done twice by Carl Thompson and Carl Zaggy. They weren't Barry Hearn shows because Barry Hearn protected him. Chris Eubank Sr. had 19 world title fights that he won 19 right out of them 19 only five of them were former or current or future world champions only five Nigel Ben had a belt he took that off him at middleweight and the other four wins that Chris Eubank had was they were former champions former Hey, what can you do when you've got 14 year old people walking around talking disgusting outside your house off shut windows? Right, so getting back to Eubank there, he didn't fight anybody, did he, Christopher Eubank? The Hearns kept wheeling him out, didn't they? On Sky, they kept saying, Well, yes, blah, de, blah, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to fight this person, we're going to fight that person. Look. Chris Eubank Sr. signed a deal with Sky, a £10 million deal, right? And they kept wheeling him out. He had loads of fights. I've mentioned this before on the channel. Chris Eubank Sr. had loads of fights. Now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put, I'm going to tell you a little story about how many fights Chris Eubank Sr. had, and you're going to be impressed. Give me two seconds. Right, let me just get this out way first, then I'll get the Chris Eubank Sr. stuff up because and you don't have a right to tell those fighters you can't do it but when you say to a fighter oh um you know s someone's not very happy about you know it, the perception of it might be you know it might be sports washing etc etc do you think the fighters go about that my job is to provide opportunities for the fighters yep you've got to get here in his credit he tells a lot of lies but he does he does deliver for the fighters but at what at what cost is he delivering 
you know what I mean? They, they, listen, fighters, they don't have a conscience, do they? They just want to earn money. They just want to earn money. Now, Eddie Hearn, right, Edward Hearn, is there to generate money for them. He's not bothered about whose toes he is going to step on in that process. I see the vision of Saudi Arabia. I see what they're doing. I went there yesterday. I went there for the World Boxing Super Series. I've never felt so. Men are welcome, women are welcome, etc, etc. And now you're going to cut me off because Anthony Joshua's there. And we'll catch up later. Pick it up after the Cheers, mate. Picking it straight up there. We're back after the press conference now. Um, I think we were somewhere along the lines of reporters or people turning up to tell fighters whether or not they should or how to earn where, the money. Where they can fight, where they should be allowed to fight to earn their money. So we've dealt with that one and just done the press conference now. Everyone's very excited and finally home for some sleep. In the same vein with regards to kind of journalists turning up, I think he's over there actually, um, people turning up to, to kind of to ask about it. Do you understand and appreciate their rights to do that and the fact that it is yeah, a, a logical, necessary thing? Yes, but they don't understand boxing. They don't understand the sport and the risks of the sport. And anyone. Does Eddie Hearn understand the risks of the sport? Eh? The same man that put Lee Purdy in a sauna. Put Lee Purdy in a sauna. Right? Lee Purdy in a sauna. Day at weighing. Put him in a sauna. How's about that? Eh? Lee, De Eddie Hearn, who understands the risks of the sport, putting Lee Purdy in a sauna. Sat him in there with his dad and then we're bragging about it on Twitter. The same Eddie Hearn, whose dad put Barry, put, uh, sorry, Bomber Graham in with Julian Jackson and the British Boxing Board of Control knocked them back for a licence for Jackson because they were blind in one eye. So what did they do? What did they do? They put him in Spain where they don't have an eye test in Spain. You only have a medical. There's no eye test in Spain. So a blind man can fight in Spain. How's about that one? Oh, it's along them lines. So they got their licence to fight, so Barry Hearn were running round rubbing his hands, telling people, who oh, I know, in the boxing industry from Sheffield, uh, don't worry about it, it's in the bag. The geezer's blind in one eye, it's in the bag. The first few rounds, he was schooling him, wasn't he? Do you know what I mean? He was schooling him. And uh, what happened then? Bomber Graham got caught, didn't he? When they pulled his gum shield out, he had four teeth embedded in gum shield. That's how hard Julian Jackson hits. And my good friend Ingram Jones always comes out with things like Julian Jackson's hardest puncher pound for pound in the world. And I now believe it now after hearing that. But, like I said, you've got Eddie Earn here going on about the dangers of the sport. Oh my God, a promoter sat there. Eddie Hearn lives in a big, massive Georgian mansion, right? With no mortgage on it. He's lived there since he was 29 years of age, right? Living in a million, millions of pounds it's worth. He drives a Rolls Royce Private Reg EH79. He's had an air transplant, his teeth done and his face stretched about. And I don't, I, I dare say all them around him have had the same done, right? He wears £2,000 suits, he's got a Rolex for every day of the week, he's a multi-millionaire. Do you think he's bothered about the dangers of the sport? No, he isn't. He's not bothered one bit. But, you know, the casual audience, they've started to listen, haven't they now? They've started to catch on to him now. So Eddie Yearn is now looking for his next Anthony Joshua. He hasn't got it in his stable. Skill-wise, he's got Usyk, hasn't he? He, he is the real deal, but he's, he, he's like Callum Smith, isn't he? Callum Smith and Usyk, they're in the same bracket, aren't they? You know what I mean? They, they, they're not going to give you anything, are they? Do you know what I mean? They're not going to give you anything whatsoever. Whatsoever. They're just going to take... They're not going to give you anything in an interview. It's like Usyk. How's he going to sell a fight him? If he fought Dillian White, Usyk... Dillian White would have to sell that fight because he's got a bit of personality, hasn't he, Dillian White? Usak hasn't got no personality. He don't even speak English properly. But does, is Eddie Earn going to be bothered about that? No, he's looking for his next fix. His fix is money. He's got everything now, hasn't he? He's got everything you could ever want. For example, some people in their life that strive to get a, a, a certain type of car or a certain type of jewellery or things like that. And Eddie earn has got all that. He's not bothered about anything. He's got everything that he needs in life. 
All he's just going to want now is his ego tickling because he's 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 off the charts now, isn't he, Eddie? Eddie's, I mean, Eddie is off the charts now. But listen to the rest of the bullshit here. Let's have a listen. And it does. We'll say good luck. But they are, they are asking and they understand about, you know, necessary thing. Yes, but they don't understand boxing. They don't understand the sport and the risks of the sport. And anyone that does will say good luck. There you go. Nobody else understands boxing. Only Eddie Hearn, the man that said he had four amateur fights, and, uh, and he was called Eddie Hills, H-I-L-L-S. Now, the British Boxing Board of Control amateur history books show that Eddie Hearn, sorry, Eddie Hills, has never, ever, ever had a fight in Billy Ricky. Never, ever has a fight happened in Billy Ricky. We anybody called Eddie Hills. Never ever has it happened. Never. It's never happened. So not in nineties, not in the noughties, never. So where were these four fights that Eddie Hearns had? Eddie H I L L S. They changed it from Hearn to Hills because they knew that they'd get a rough ride on amateur circuit because he's Barry Hearn's son. Well let me tell you this. When Eddie Hearn, right? had these bouts, so when he said he had these bouts, his dad wasn't even promoting. His dad bailed out of boxing. His dad bailed out, he hardly had anything to do with boxing for years. Frank Warren ruled the roost from 95, from when Eubank lost his second fight. Frank Warren ruled from then, all the way up to Frotch Groves. I'd say when Frotch Groves was on, Eddie Hearn ruled then, or leading up to that. Boutte, I think when Boutte fight, when Boutte fought Frotch, you could say Eddie were number one then. So Frank Warren were out, of, were out of the game. Sorry, Frank Warren was top of his game for 17 years, from 95 up until 17. And then it's dipped down on it. And Frank sort of tried to come back recently, but... I don't think he's going to come back and be ever the force that he was. Although he's a good boxing man. Personally, I don't want to be his mate. But he's a boxing man. You can't take that away from him. You break him in half, he is boxing. He knows all the moves. But he's got enough on his plate at the moment with Daniel DeBar, Yarde and Tyson Fury. Because the rumours are that they'll not be Frank Warren fighters going into 2021. So the next 18 months going to be very going to be very interesting but getting back to Eddie Hearn likeable guy very hard working but has got no scruples whatsoever whatsoever has he got any scruples none but they are they're asking and they understand about you know guys from Amnesty all talking about you know human rights and stuff do you see the need for them to be able to ask those types of questions if they want they don't they don't come to any other press conference so Eddie, uh, you just seen what he said there regarding people asking him questions about the, the ongoing troubles in Saudi Arabia, and this is this is what you're up against. Look at this here. This is what you're Those up against. Types of questions. If they want, they don't. There you go. There you go. If they want, they. There you go. Not to ask those types of questions. If they want, they don't. They don't come to any other press. I want to get this. This is going to be a picture fuck video. Good question. There you go. Old lazy eye Eddie Hearn there. Look. That's what happens. If you question Eddie Hearn, if you want to question him, if you want to question Eddie Hearn, right, about anything to do with boxing, and it's something that he that doesn't sit well with him, look at this. That's what you're up against. That is what you're up against. Now that to me is not arrogance, it's just damn right rudeness in it. And look, does this man here, take a good look at this man here, take a good look at this man here, right? Does that man there, right, does he look, like, I know you people are going to say, ah, oh, Porky, you're obsessed by this fucking, what he's doing in boxing and that. Listen, I love boxing. I loved it before Eddie Earn, and I love it when Eddie earn has gone. Now, let me tell you this. Is that the look of a man that really gives 
a flying shit about anything that anybody else says. All he's bothered about is getting this done, getting the money in the bank and going down to that sugar hut in Brentwood in his Rolls Royce and sitting there loading it up at the bar with all his fake Essex mates. Oh, when he goes in there and has a beer with him, a champagne, and then leaves, they all turn around and say, what a fucking cant. Because that's what they say about him. I know it's hard, to, hard, hard for Eddie to understand that, but boxing's a very small world. And let me tell you this, when Eddie's out for a drink in there, and when he leaves, fucking hellfire. Unbelievable. So, but does he, is he bothered? No, he's in his own little bubble, isn't he? How can he be bothered about anything? Could you imagine him as a dictator? He'd be unbelievable, wouldn't he? He would be unbelievable. But my advice to Eddie Earn is this: beef up your security. If they want, they don't. They don't come to any other press conference. They don't show any interest in the sport of boxing. They don't care for the fighters. Well, I show. I show an interest in in, in boxing, Eddie. I show an interest in the sport of boxing and I'd be willing to do a phone interview with you Eddie but you haven't got the knackers for it have you because I'd just ask you the proper questions for example why doesn't anybody mention stubble lately nobody mentions the word stubble do they why not why doesn't anybody mention stubble why not it's all over everybody's t-shirts I'll tell you why they don't mention it because they fucking, they're all using it, aren't they? Frank Warren uses it. Nobody mentioning StubHub, it was left to me. It was me who fucking got the StubHub thing rolling on social media. And do you know what I mean? Everybody were giving me bullets to fire, but the same people that were giving me bullets to fire who had blue ticks, when I sent these same people a direct message and I said, here, why are you lot not saying anything? And I'm talking people that work at Sky as well as Box Nation at the time people who were working at Sky were giving me bullets to fire right because I'm pretty fearless aren't I I'm not really nobody can beat me any uglier than I already am I've got teeth missing top of ear bitten off baldy head I'm 50 next year you know what I mean I'm a tired old lion aren't I so they're gonna stick they're gonna wheel me out aren't they I'm gonna be patsy aren't I but Nobody else wanted to say a dicky bird, did they? Do you know why? Because they don't want to ruin their own little parade. They all want to earn, don't they? Because they don't. They might need him down the line. Well, let me tell you this. I don't need Eddie Earn down the line. And let me tell you another thing as well. Dennis don't need Eddie Earn down the line. Although, if Dennis had to work with him, he'd call a meeting and he'd say to me, look, thinking about doing something with Eddie Earn, what do you think? And I'd just say, well, count me out. It's only one show, isn't it? It's not going to end at will. Count me out. But then I'd probably have to look at it as if to say, well, I have a job to do as well. It doesn't mean to say I'm going to like it, but I can assure you, I'm not going to be hanging out at the back of his arse like some people. I mean, fucking hell, did you see that last fight, last press conference he had and people they were working with in that? Some of the people that were working with him swore down they'd never worked with him. Swore down. Now... That's boxing for you, isn't it? It comes back and bites you in the arse. It's amazing what money does to people. This is why I always say to people, right, watch what you're doing out there if you're breaking the law. Always be very careful about the people that you've got around you. For example, I know we're going off, off, off key here, but if they've not done the time with you, don't do the crime with them, all right? Now, could you imagine having Eddie Hearn as your co-accused? Would you be sweating when you got to trial day if he was offered a deal? I know you would be. But it is what it is, isn't it? And like I'm just going to say, it's a business. They don't understand what fighters go through. We don't understand what fighters go through now, do we? Do I understand what fighters go through? Yeah, of course I do. I'm the type of guy that's sat outside the house making sure that they're not coming in at four in the morning. I'm that type of guy, me. If Dennis has got his money invested in people, he wants to know where they're going. If you've got £40,000 invested in Liam Cameron, and there's a rumour going round that he's on coke, it'll be me that'll be fucking having a little nosy about. Because otherwise, what would, I, what, would I, what, would, what would I be around Dennis for? I've got to do my job, haven't I? Do you know what I mean? We don't have that problem with Josh Whale, but yeah, when we had Liam Cameron, 
Then you said to me, is Liam out on town at night? I said, I don't know. He said, we'll find out. Little things like that. That's how the boxing industry works. People keep questioning me on these emails here. What, what was your role then? My role basically is to make the tea. I'm just to make the tea. You sit there, be quiet, listen and learn. That's my role. That's all that my role is. I'm no different to Frank Smith, except I'm doing something I should have been doing 25 years ago. <laughs> But, you know, we're obviously 25 years ago, I was doing a fucking big prison sentence, so... But it's boxing, isn't it? It's a business, it's an horrible business, but like I said, this guy here has just pulled his dick out and he's took a piss from the top balcony of the penthouse on all the people on the floor. What's the matter with you, Rocky? Come here, come here. What's the matter? What's the matter? Are you leaving home? Go on, then. If you want to go out, go on. Go on, doors open. So, in so day, not. end of day, and edit, look, he's not bothered, look, Eddie. Really? Okay, moving on. Did I know you see that then? That. So, in that respect, not really. There you go. That's what you're up against now. Anybody who doesn't tell the line, that's what happens. Ask Glenn McClory about that. Ask Clinton Woods about that. If you're not going to read off the same hymn sheet as Sky... There's no room at the inn. If you want to read off the same him sheet as Eddie Hearn, there's plenty of room for you. Look at Eddie's favourites and look at the opportunities they get. Tony Bellew, four pay-per-view fights. Four pay-per-view fights. He's won two world title fights against Macabu and Blowjob Flores. So Macabu and Blowjob Flores, BJ Flores... Them two guys are Tony Bellew's world title wins. A vacant belt. And let me tell you, Macabo and Flores are never ever going to be a world champion. Never, ever, ever. But this gentleman here... Come here. Nip his cheek for him, isn't he lovely? This little rogue here, this little rascal, managed, and I don't know how, but you've got to tip your hat to him. Well done, Eddie. This man here got Tony Bellew four pay-per-view fights. Tony Bellew won British, Commonwealth, European and a world title. And they were all vacant belts. So the, the, the brown envelopes going on behind the scenes. Can you imagine? Unbelievable. And then got him a, a Goodison Park fight at Everton. That weren't pay-per-view because they knew they couldn't push it. But they tried and they nearly got it pay-per-view. But they, Sky wouldn't have it. So, he got Tony Bellew, British Commonwealth, European and World Champion. Although, I think he might have won uh, Commonwealth or British with Frank Warren, I'm not sure. But, Eddie got him the European and the World title. I know that for definite. And let me tell you this, he did well with Tony Bellew. And Tony Bellew, I don't like him, but he, he, know, he knows how to be a self-promoter. Same as Tyson Fury. He can sell shit to Arabs, couldn't he? It's Santa Arabs. Because if he can sell that fight, Tommy Swartz or Otto Wallin, oh my god. So, but, I've noticed Eddie Hearn of lately, he's not been hammering Tyson Fury, so are the rumours true? Is Tyson Fury heading to Matchroom? I'd say yes. Is Anthony Yard heading to Matchroom? I'd say yes. Is Daniel Dubois uh, uh, heading to Matchroom? I'd say yes take them off Frank Warren and that's it so trust me when Eddie Hearn goes to bed at night he has a little black book he'll have a look who, who, who certain fighters are with certain promoters and slowly but surely he will want to sign them fighters that's what he'll want to do and let me tell you this I won't put it past him getting Lomachenko I won't put it past him getting Lomachenko because what he'll be doing, he'll be doing everything he can to make sure that Usek thinks that he's fantastic. And every little single thing that he does with Usek that's good, Usek will tell Loma. Because that's what fighters do. They tell each other, don't they? For instance, I know a certain female fighter who fights for a certain promoter. And she tells this other female fighter that I know that it's great here and they do this and they do that. Fighters get to know. Ice cream man Rocky, can you hear that? Hear it Rocky? 
Oh, is that Rocky? Ice cream, man. Who is it? Ice cream, man. Oh, what can we do? It's ice cream, man, time. But that's boxing for you, isn't it? Boxers talk amongst each other and word gets out. But trust me, Tyson Fury, he'll be heading towards Eddie Earn him soon, trust me. Now, Frank Warren is very, very quiet this week, and he's not said a word about Saudi Arabia. Well, he's not going to do, is he? Because they've already been in on act, haven't they? Frank's looking to do something in Saudi now, so it's now a free for all. Do you know what I mean? It's now a free for all. And like I said earlier in the video, Frank Warren has not said diddly squat about Saudi. Not said a dicky bird about Saudi Arabia in his column. What's that tell you? All roads lead to Saudi, baby. Okay, moving on. I know you've spoken about it um, a load of times today. KSI Logan Paul, yeah. um, not a shock to some people in the sport. Not a shock to some people in the sport that there's been a quite sizable backlash. The backlash makes me horny. I mean... Uh how can he say that right? The back, the back flash, the back, the back whatever flash makes him horny. Backlash makes him horny. The backlash makes me horny. The backlash makes me horny. No, I'll tell you what makes him horny. The fact that he's gonna pocket about between six and eight million pound off the off that fight off the KSI Logan Paul. The commercial aspects of it are, are 8 to 10 million apparently, that's just off the commercial. Then you've got the gate over there, then there's the pay-per-view now. I don't, there must be something I don't get regarding this YouTube, yeah. I know that uh, I have I have a team of people behind me that are advising me and helping me and they're, they're giving me all opportunities that, that uh, I've always dreamed of but maybe I don't grasp it as much or maybe I'm small minded and I'm in a minority and I just want to be boxing. Maybe that's what I am. I mean, Dennis once said to me, would you be interested in doing this? We're doing a bit with this company I've got, Russell. Dennis owns an engineering company and they've got contracts with Rolls Royce and Aerospace and stuff like that in, in Dubai. And they've got a place in Sheffield and they said, would you, would you be interested in it? I said, what well, the fuck? I don't want to do it like that. Well, why not? I said, no, I'm not bothered. He says, what? what are you bothered about then? I said, just boxing. He says, well, no money in boxing. I says, so? That's all I'm bothered about. I don't get too old about stuff like that. I don't really think Dennis does, to be honest, but public pay is good, isn't it? <laughs> but boxing's what I am. Boxing's what I'm interested in. Ask any of my friends, Terry, Rico. Ask Ozzy Smith, Smido. You know, all them lads. And boxing's all them lads are interested in. I thought bo boxing were all Brian King were interested in, but it seems that Brian King, who I've actually got a lot of time for, seems that Brian's a bit disillusioned with the sport at the moment. So I'm wondering if, you know, Steve Wellings, uh, Rob Kelly, rapping Rob Kelly, and Ata Dave Lowback, and Donny Baseball, and all them guys, uh, Chris Ogden, people like that, is boxing not? on top of their agenda no more because of how things are changing at the moment in the sport maybe maybe that might be the case but boxing's all i'm interested in i do like snooker but it frustrates me and i'm not patient enough to learn the finer aspects of the game but boxing is all i'm interested in and i want boxing to succeed i don't want it to see anthony joshua in saudi I want to see that Anthony Joshua's fighting in Cardiff or Hamden Park or... I mean, if he's not even going to go to places in England, what's he talking about this world tour for? Because it's money, in it. But you, if, if Joshua's getting out of the game, if he gets another good hiding, right, he might even... He might not want it no more. He might just, well, he might just want to break from the sport. And Eddie will have sensed that. He will know. There will be things in place and there will be things that we're not going to get to know about that are going on behind the scenes. And let me tell you this, these people will be flapping. There's mouths to feed. I mean, Robert McCracken is a very, very, very wealthy, wealthy man now. He's, you know, he had his 10% off Carl Froch, you know, for, for 12 and a half years, 35 fights. And, you know, let's just say, for instance, if Carl Froch isn't... 
20 million from his career top line if Carl Froch has earned 20 million pound right George uh, sorry Robert McCracken's had 2 million there hasn't he over a period of 12 year so did you see where I'm coming from first couple of years it ain't really that good in boxing when you're a trainer and don't forget they were living in bed sits above Lennox Lewis College in Clapham now the yeah, you know, they had it tough, but Robert McCracken's a multi-millionaire now. He's a very, very, very rich man. I dare say that Robert McCracken's weekly wage that he gets up there at the EIS, that's probably just left in the bank. Do you know what I'm saying? He probably saves that every week and lives on whatever. But Robert McCracken's a very, very, very wealthy, wealthy man. Wealthy man that you, like you could never imagine. And Joshua pays him very well. So I tip my hat off, but these people, they don't want the gravy train to end. They don't want it to end. When Joshua took that tonking that he's just took, I can assure you that these people here would have been flapping and looking. They would, they would have sat down and said, right, which way we're going to spin this now? Because that's what happens. I've been, on, I've been sat with people in situations. When I've said to them, well, what happened after you lost your world title? And they said, well, we sat down, didn't we, once we got back. And we had a meeting and they say, where are we going to go for me? What happens with this? Who's going to plan a route? Teams sit down and they talk, don't they? That's what they do. It's no different to anybody losing a British title. I dare say when Josh Whale got robbed for his European title fight in, in France, they were probably devastated and on floor. They've got back from there. Yeah, they put an appeal on that, but them appeals don't mean shit. They've got back and they've probably had a team meeting and they, they, they didn't they had a they think about what way they're gonna go and whose fault were it? Well they were nobody's fault, it was just a judge's fault. It's not anything that Steffi Bull's done or or Mick Whale or anything Josh has done. Sometimes you just don't get the rub of the green. Personally, I'd have stayed at that weight. I wouldn't have budged because if he'd have won that fight and got the decision, they'd have still been fighting at that weight now, wouldn't they? But because they didn't get the decision, it causes a knee-jerk reaction. Now, their knee-jerk reaction for Mick and Josh, well, what did they do? They fought it a different way for a British title. Now, I think Josh has passed that level now. I think Josh, Josh Whale, I think he's European level. Whether he is at featherweight, I don't know, we have to wait and see, don't we? That's my job to find him, to put lists together with my pals and sit down and work out who he's going to fight. We sit down and work as a team. But a team making the decision, it affects every, it affects everybody. If Joshua don't fight, right, I dare say there's probably people who are going to lose the job. For starters, he's got all them people hanging around him who are all getting ring with a Joshua t-shirt on. Right, them people are around him for what? What are they bringing to the table? What are they bringing to the table? Joshua's got all them tied round him. They're all going to need feeding. They're all going to need f watering. They all need a roof over their head. They all need expenses to travel about. That's what he's got round his neck, and that's because of Eddie Earn. Eddie Earn's got them people around him. Half of them people around him will be spies that will be reporting back to Eddie Earn. I can assure you of that. But Eddie will have them spying on Joshua and telling him everything that goes on. But he'll, he'll be talking to them as, a, as a confidants and stuff like that because Joshua's a commodity. Now, I heard a story once that Joshua went out, right? Now, he went out on town and it got back to Eddie Earn. Eddie Earn were fucking flapping because we all know the temptations of the champ, don't we? You know, you put Joshua out there, and he it, it, on, on the town, and I'll change camera, change battery. You put Joshua out there on the town on a Saturday night with his mates, he's going to stop traffic, isn't he? It's going to be hard for him to have much of a life, so he'll surround himself with kids who can have a bit of a fight, who can probably protect him and handle themselves, and people he'll trust, so he'll go back to the people he grew up with, because... Humans are creatures of habit. Now, I'm a creature of habit. If I'm out on on the town on a Saturday night, or if I nip, just just nip into Wadhaf uh, for a drink, into Fox and Hound, or White Hart, or whatever, if I nip into Wadhaf for a drink, right, 
at white art i go in there satin white art somebody comes up to me porky can you lend me 50 quid and i don't know that person from adam but he's a friend of a friend i won't give him it but if i see the kid and he said can you lend me 50 quid and i went to school with him he'd get it off me and i won't ask for it back unless he and if he didn't want to pay me well i lost a friend now but it cost me 50 quid to find out about him that's how i work now point i'm trying to make is this joshua will not know who we can trust now he's been around mccracken now only for 10 years mccracken got him off at court with a letter didn't he he stood up for him at court with a letter and got joshua off off out of a sticky situation and gave him good advice but joshua will feel indebted to him for the rest of his life now personally i don't think mccracken's a good fit for joshua i like the loyalty thing and all that but i never really thought that McCracken were best fit for Carl Froch for the simple reason I felt that Carl Froch could have added a lot more to his game than what he did he could have had a better inside game he could have you know he, he could have fought in, in, in many different ways there were lots of things that I didn't like about his style but I like the fact that he just went after him in the ring but if he tried to get technical with a technical fighter and I felt that Carl Froch were found wanting you found wanting against Ward, Durrell, uh, Jermaine Taylor. But the Durrell fight could have gone either way, but he got the nod because he was at home. And Durrell had lost a point. Jermaine Taylor, he knocked him out in a fight he was losing. And the Andre Ward fight, Andre Ward were too skillful for him on the night. And that's a choker for me to admit. But I thought Carl started chasing the fight down at the wrong time. Right? Ward were knackered afterwards because he told people I know. But I mean, um, it's a loss, isn't it? If it were I a didn't loss get backlash on one day, I'd be worried that I was... It were a loss. But the bottom line is this. Joshua will need people around him that he can trust. Now, all these people who jump in the ring with him and they jump out and they're all stood there. None of them have got a laminate. So, technically, they're not even allowed to be in the ring. If that ring collapses, like it did before, after Martin Murray fought Sergio Martinez, if that ring collapses, let me tell you this, Nobody will be getting paid out because they shouldn't be in the ring. All right? You need a laminate to get in that ring. But if Joshua wants to have cheerleaders around him, fair enough. But I can assure you that half of them will be telling Eddie Earn what's going on. In fact, I know one person is anyway, but I can't reveal that yet. But we might do it at a later date. We're going to see. But Eddie Earn's not daft. He's a smart cookie. He will know what's going on in that camp. That's why they had that big lurch guy, that Neil, flying all over with Joshua. He were one mole. Now, I've heard that Joshua found out he were a mole anyway, so I don't know if he's still around Joshua now, that big Neil. But if he is, well, it's a shame, isn't it, because he's a mole. He's a mole in the hole. But it is what it is, isn't it? It's one of them things, isn't it? It's boxing, isn't it? It's boxing. Do you know what I mean? It's it's an horrible sport. They're pulling wool over our eyes and they will continue to pull the wool over our eyes. And that's just what happens. Do you know what I mean? So, peace out. Let me, let me come back and film this later. If I turn my back long enough for Big Ed to put a hole in it, there'd be a hole in it. Big Ed. Great Big Ed. <laughs> you know why they call him that? Because his ideas are big. Someday he's going to get a really big one. About me. And it'll be his last. That's what I meant about what, when I mentioned earlier on in the, fil in the, in the film, in the, in the video, about Eddie Earn, Big Ed. That's what we call him in Sheffield, Big Ed. We call him that basically because like James Cagney calls him here because he's got big ideas, so we call him Big Ed. <laughs> big old Eddie. But yeah, his ideas are big, but they involve money. But well, boxing's not just about money, it's about feelings and emotions and things like that. And uh, like I said... You know, it's it's a sport where everybody can fall out who's close friends because everybody's got to try and earn a few quid. It's like boxing reminds me of being 
of that film of people being on the Titanic where they all want to get off the boat and they're all scrambling aren't they for the lifeboats well that's what boxing's like it's like we're all on a big boat the Titanic and all the money is on the lifeboats and everybody's scrambling for it that's my opinion and there's people that have got no scruples and uh, oh god look at this I've just got a text of somebody now who works in media and uh, <laughs> look at this here the note surprises me nothing surprises me uh, about boxing nothing surprises me at all but but like I said, it's just I just like like to have a, a bit of light-hearted uh, banter, looking at how it is. And like I said, Eddie Earn's ideas are big, aren't they? But it usually involves everybody else's money, like Daz owns and the government's money for the EIS at Sheffield and Sky's platform and Coogan Cassius's platform. It all involves everybody else's money. I want to see Eddie Earn put some of his, some of his own money in. Uh, they weren't putting many shows on in the mid 90s were they like I pointed out earlier in the video they all seemed to be fights that were put on elsewhere so they could collect the money because that's when they were in trouble and all they did were put their fighters on as shows where they were away from home them sort of fights where you just pick up the check it's all very easy that isn't it but uh, it's all good business sense but everything revol revolves around business for them there's no investing there's no investing in fighters they don't invest in fighters uh, for example in 33 year 33 year they've only had one world champion who wasn't from the GB team and he wasn't even born in England that were Herbie Hyde 33 year ABI'd, he won the title, he was cashed in first defence. And then of course you've got Because you've got Joshua Yafai, Callum Smith and Charlie Edwards. Now Charlie Edwards has just kept his title, hasn't he? By hook or crook. Joshua's lost his title. So you've got Charlie Edwards with a belt, Joshua ain't got a belt. Callum Smith's in no man's land and Cal Yafai don't sell a ticket. That's Eddie's four guys that's won world title belts under Eddie's watch. And they're all GB McCracken picks. Now this is what pisses me off about boxing. They're getting the pick of the cream. Four world champions, that's it. Look at Dennis Hobson, Carl Thompson, Clinton Woods, Jamie McDonnell. Ricky Atom won a world title with Dennis, although he didn't have him, he didn't have Ricky from Skid Row, did he? You know, there's Paul Silky Jones, he uh, he helped Paul Silky Jones on his way, didn't he? So, there's a few in there, though, but Silky Jones won his on a matchroom show, didn't he? But, you know, Dennis worked with him along the line. There's a, there's a few, there's a few I could I could go on about, but Davey Day won, it, won uh, titles with Dennis, didn't he? You know, it's... Uh, Stewie Hall won a world title. I mean, Dennis has had six world champions. Eddie Earns had more, hasn't he? But as regards from debut, Dennis has had no world champions from debut. Except Clinton Woods. That's it. Jamie McDonald turned up on back of losses, though, didn't he? So did Stewie Hall. But the point I'm trying to make is, Eddie's only had four world champions. To say he's this great, great, big number one promoter, and he is. He's only had four from from debut and his dad had one that's five five world champions in 33 year so where's the other 39 come from then well they pinched them all didn't they that's what they do they pick your pocket they let everybody else do the hard work then they nip in for example everybody knows I'm a bit of a snooker buff don't they well Steve Davis when did you ever see Steve Davis winning frames from the beginning of the frame he didn't did he Steve Davis he wasn't very confident in pressure matches right about breaking the balls up unless he were like six or seven frames up he'd never take risks he'd always play the safety game he played the percentage shots he never entertained the crowd did he he's one of them people steve davis were 
there'd be a scrappy frame, then somebody'd nip in and make a 50, make a mistake, and he'd pounce and clear up, wouldn't he? When all the balls were open. So, and that's just what the urns do, don't they, really? They pounce on fighters and get them at the right time when everybody else has done all the heavy lifting. <laughs> Like Dennis had done all heavy lifting with Jamie McDonald, British Commonwealth European world champion, world title in his own in his own town in a ten thousand seater stadium. Lost three hundred grand on that fight. Eddie nips in and takes him, just like he took cleverly. You know what I mean? He'd already won a world title. Billy Joe Saunders nipped in and got him, didn't he? Do you see where I'm coming from? The, the list is endless. Ricky Burns, world champion. Frank Warren had done all the heavy lifting with them guys, hadn't he? You know, he's ruffled feathers, but it's all within the rules, so we can't complain, can we? But the bottom line is this. They don't care about fighters. They don't care about fighters. When you're done and dusted and washed up, you can't even get 50 quid off Freddy. Ask Lee Purdy about all this, he's my new best mate, this is my new best mate the best mate that they put in a sauna, do me a favour well look, it's Saturday night 9 o'clock and I'm not going out I'm being a good boy I'm writing scripts and ideas down for the channel this is where we're going to reap the benefits in a few years us boxing fans and we're going to turn boxing on its head we're going to claim back boxing I don't know how I like, but all we can do is just keep making a stance and just spreading the word and not buying these pay-per-view KSI fights. Although Joshua Ruiz is a good fight, actually. So I don't agree with it being in Saudi, but I will probably buy it. So I'm not saying don't buy that fight, but I don't want people to buy a fight that's in America with YouTubers on it. Don't buy that fight. I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's right. It's morally wrong, in fact. Because it's all them young boxers, isn't it? All them boxers in the country that are trying to make a name for themselves, you know, and get on in get on in the boxing industry, and then two YouTubers can come and just do that, and Eddie Hearn can back them. Do you know how bad is that? It's bad, isn't it? But like I said, it is what it is, isn't it? So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. I hope you've enjoyed the last couple of videos I've done. You know, we're pushing hard now to get to uh, to get to. Uh, the goals what we want to do so it's all good so keep supporting boxing um, shout out to uh, Climate Cool uh, Doncaster and uh, Castle Conservatories and Edlington Motors thanks for backing the channel it's all good positive stuff and thanks for South Yorkshire Packaging and SYM South Yorkshire Metals that's Dennis's company for the officers that you've given me and the support all right so peace out keep on trucking and no before anybody says anything no i'm not going out on the piss i'm gonna stay in with another bottle of blue moon it's quite addictive this belgian lager belgian wheat ale blue moon it's called blue moon i wonder if we can drink so peace out as your queen, ruler and protector. Brexit is dividing our country and therefore it is my duty to unite us again as one. Please, please subscribe now to Porky's Corner on YouTube and let Porky bring peace and happiness into our lives once more. Thank you for listening. Good night. Oh, I've just remembered. Keep on trucking.